Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another session of VCE Virtual Career Exploration with Light. Today, we're going to talk with Tara. And is it, um, how do you say your last name? Because I was saying the O or the A. What's the vowel sound? It's with the O, Bateman. 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 Tara Bateman is, oh, Bateman. Yeah. See, I, I knew I was going to mess it up anyway. Tara <laughs> Bateman. So love that. Um, she's going to talk to us and guide us through being an entrepreneur. And we have our host. And again, Light is just here to provide uh, a space for you, youth, to understand and get to know a little bit about careers. And if you have any questions about this uh, video or any others, we'll be happy to help you. And you guys can always register. So I'll um, let uh, the youth, the kids, I want to say kids because they're all kids. Gabriel, Davian, and Sanaya introduce themselves and then we'll go with the host. So, good evening. My name is Gabriel. I'm uh, a member of Light. I get to work with them and I'm this is going to be my first time uh, hosting. So I'm very excited for that. And I'd like to uh, let uh, Devian and Sanaya introduce themselves. Good evening. I'm um, Sanaya. I work with the Light Group too. This is probably like my third interview. So this is really exciting. My name is David. Uh, I'm like the youth council president, but like. And we just had Sabria join in. And I don't know, let me see. Oh, yep. So we can start, um, Tara. Okay. Great. Well, um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I am so, so appreciative that you all took time out of uh, what I'm sure is your very busy schedule, other things you could be doing during this time, but thank you very much for coming and for letting me come and share some things with you all. Um, so I, I really just, um, I like to get to know people, right? I'm very much um, an extrovert. Has anybody ever heard the terms introvert, extrovert before? Yes, okay, I see a couple nods. Um, well, I am very much an extrovert, so I love the interaction and the talking with people. So by all means, if you have questions or if I say something and you're like, it just doesn't really make sense or I don't really get it, please let me know. I'm happy to give another example or, or try to you know, just provide more clarification on a particular thing. So, um, as was shared, my name is Tara Bateman, and um, something about me, one of my strengths is learning. Oh, we have another guest. Well, hello. <laughs> I love the excitement. So one of my strengths is learning, and just something I absolutely love to do. I liken myself as to a sponge right? So everybody knows a sponge. So in order for a sponge to work though, what's the first thing? Hey. Okay. No, no. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What? Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the first thing you need to do with the sponge before you can get it working? Anybody? You have to fill it with something, right? With a liquid, with like water or something. But in order for it to be really effective, you need to. Oh, you got to take it out of the package. Well, yes, for yeah, yes, that is the first thing. Take it out of the package. <laughs> yes, and then you fill it out with water or whatever the liquid is that you're going to be using, and then you have to squeeze it out, right? In order for it to really be effective and do what needs to be done. So that's me when it comes to learning and knowing different things. I like to soak up, soak up, soak up, and then I love opportunities like this where I get to squeeze and share what it is that, um, that I have learned that I think might be a benefit. So one way that I get to do that on a daily basis is through my quote unquote nine to five, which is a college professor at a local university. 
and I teach classes including uh, business, um, computer applications. I teach the freshman orientation classes. So those students that are just coming into college, helping them to learn how to navigate uh, this new landscape that they are now a part of. And then I also teach career orientation, which is once the student has gone through that journey of college, they're at the end and they're ready to embark on the next step of their life journey. Um, and so I help them with that. In the midst of all that, in terms of teaching and learning and growing and having met, um, having met people really all across the country, I have found that college is not necessarily for everyone, but the education is. And that's a big part of why I do what I do outside of my nine to five is sharing business and different skills and things that usually you wouldn't maybe really get to know about until you got to college, but sharing them with teenagers for those who have the entrepreneurial spirit who want to start a business now so that they can be effective, right? And successful. So you don't have to wait till you get to college to know the importance of a financial statement. Right? You don't have to wait until you take that accounting class for somebody to at least give you the basics of on a balance sheet, you have assets, you have liabilities, right? And to give you some examples of what that is, to have someone give you the basics of what is the difference between revenue and profit, right? Because just because you make $50,000 in your business doesn't mean you get to keep the whole $50,000, right? So just understanding that and, and then just some of the terminology that goes along with that. Um, so that's a big part of what I do in terms of on a day-to-day -day basis, in terms of teaching in college, and then also with the entrepreneurship. So now I wanna shift a little bit more talking about the entrepreneurship part. So I am also in addition to being a learner and that being one of my strengths, um, I ideate. Has anyone heard that word before? Ideate. So it's when you, someone is just really good at coming up with a lot of different ideas. And I mean, like all the time, like I'm always coming up with an idea to do something or to share with someone or, hey, you like doing that? Um, did you know you can and then here I am with an idea of what they can do to either make money with it or use it for their own um, enjoyment, right? Or use it for their own type of, um, how can you say, like, like, like a mental health, right? When you just need something to help calm you, right? So people who you see always maybe touching something, right? You ever see anybody like that? They're always fiddling with the pen or touching, right? And so someone, was doing that all the time and came up with a fidget spinner. Everybody heard of a fidget spinner? Yep. Yeah. Right? Okay. So at some point, instead of someone saying to them, oh, you're always touching stuff, you're always fiddling, they were like, hey, this is a business opportunity, right? Um, for people who like to just uh, kind of touch things and, and um, how, can I, how can I describe it? Uh, ASMR. Right, is anyone familiar with, with that term, nope. right? So a business idea for that might be making slime, right? People are making hundreds of thousands of dollars making and selling slime, right? So that, that's when in terms of ideate, I, that's what I do. Someone says, oh, I enjoy doing this. And immediately my will start thinking in terms of, huh, okay, what about Right. So that's the other thing that I do. And that is something that serves me very well when talking about entrepreneurship. Right. Because it's very important to have that type of creativity going. Right. And something that I really love sharing with young people is there's no such thing as that's too silly. OK. If you had another adult to tell you that I'm here to tell you there's no such thing. Right. There's no such thing as that's already been done. Have you been in the supermarket lately and walked down the bread aisle? 
and seeing how many different types of bread there are? Anybody, right? There's not yeah. just one. Go ahead, what was that, Davion? I say, yeah. Right, so that just goes to show there's no such thing as, oh, somebody already did it. Mm -mm. And even if your idea is out there, has anybody ever heard of the pet rock? Yeah. Right? A rock. Things that you see on the ground. Someone made a whole business out of that. Here recently I saw something. Uh, has anyone ever heard of the uh, orange juice company Tropicana? Yeah. yeah. Yes. They recently came out with a cereal that is meant to be eaten with orange juice, not with milk. Is that is that not wild? I just thought that was like, are you serious? That that's amazing. It it seems like <laughs> it's the the product of a really good ideation session. Like someone was thinking late at night, and they're like, hey, let's let's go with this. Yes, that, that seems like a a lot of what you do. It is, it is, and so I just use examples like that, just again to share with young people, because usually you know, you are the ones who have those wild ideas, right? Your imagination is still going. You haven't gotten to the point of some adults of thinking, well, how am I going to pay this bill? And is this rational, right? And what will people think of me? And oh, I have to be on a certain path. Your imagination is like, and it's awesome. And so, yes, that is a big part of what I do is to just try to encourage you to stay on that path because it can be done. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for sharing that with us. I, I, we love hearing about what you do. And um, maybe do you want to go a little bit more into your, your background and what, what got you started in business? Because I know a lot of people have that, like maybe that one focus point where they say, this is what I want to do. And here's why. Do you have a, a point like that? And, and could you share? Sure. So thank you. That is a great question. So mine did not come overnight. So I was of the um, I was of the upbringing, right? My parents, you want to get a good education, right? Go to school, get a good education, do well in high school, get into a good college, finish college well, get a good job. That was that was what I heard all the time, and so that was the path that I started on. And in elementary school, and middle school, and high school, I'm doing great. And then I got to college. And I did not have anyone in my life to help me identify things. So when I say help me identify things, like I did not have a strong guidance counselor to say, this might be a good career path for you, or to say, this might be a better college choice for you because, so let me back step a little bit. So all coming up through um, elementary, middle school, high school, I always, uh, attended smaller schools. So there were smaller class sizes, right? Which I excelled very well in. And then my very first college experience was at Penn State University, main campus. My very first college class was Monday morning, 8 a.m., enter the psychology. Oh. In an auditorium filled with hundreds of other students. And I was just like, what is this? And when I started, my major that I was pursuing was accounting because uh -huh. that was a good major, right? So I struggled. I mean, I was on the struggle bus. I was taking up all the seats on a struggle bus. It was so hard for me because I was just not used to that much right? That many people, I had a hard time connecting, finding my tribe, um, learning how to even relate with the different uh, instructors, right? Just figuring it out. I had a really, really hard time. Also during that time, I was having some trouble at home in terms of my parents were going through a separation after 17 years of marriage. So there was just a lot going on in my life. Um, so needless to say, once I got to the end of that first year, 
I got that very nice letter stating that I was on academic probation. And I had never gotten a letter like that before. And I just was like, okay, that's it. That, that's it. I need to just, I, I don't know, right? But it was just it because my world had already, has always had like a path, right? You do this, you get this. You do this, you get this. And now here I was just confused. So I'm on academic probation, right, from school. I'm like, I already took out student loan for that. We won't pay that back. And my parents have now split up, right? So I'm dealing with that and I'm back home with not knowing what I'm gonna do for school, no job. Yeah, just a little, little lost. In my mind, it was a thought, but you still should be in college, right? So I started looking at local universities. And I said, maybe accounting, right, wasn't really where I should be. Because I took that first accounting class and it was so boring. So boring. So I said, well, I like to help people. So maybe I could be a nurse. That's a noble profession. So I enroll in one of the local universities there um, where I was from in, in Philadelphia. And you have to take biology. That's just one of the things you need to take, right, to be a nurse. Yeah. So I go in and I take biology in my very first biology class and I fail. I say, hmm, huh. I've been doing well in school, right? All those other years, graduated fifth in my high school. Like, just what is going on here? But I'm not deterred. I enroll again the next semester and I'm going to take biology because I'm going to be a nurse. And I took it again. And I failed. And then I said, okay, hold on. <laughs> we need to reevaluate because this is a very important part of becoming, right, a nurse. Like you need to know the biology part. And the biology was just an, a prerequisite to continue with any degree. So I got some help. I got some tutoring, took biology for that third time. I passed with a C and I said, now what else am I going to do with my life? All right. So I took a little bit of time off right then because I was like, this college thing, I'm just racking up debt. I don't really have a focus. Let me work for a little bit. Right. So I started doing that. After working for a couple of years, I came back and I said, all right, I'm going to try this school thing again. So I went to a local community college. Again, that was better for me. I still hadn't put it together yet that I do well, I do better in smaller environments though, right? So here I am now at the community college, it's coming along, I'm doing better. And I'm like, but I really want that bachelor's degree. I really want that four-year degree. So I ended up transferring to a four-year university and that is where I finished out and finally got my degree um, in health administration, which I love. I love that experience. And the four-year university that I transferred to was a much smaller school. That was also the key. So for what was supposed to be, right, typically for an undergraduate degree, they say four years, right? Yeah. Maybe yeah. five. It took me 13 years to finally finish. And what I want to share with you all is that, but I did finish. So even if you are on a path and you're trying something and it's not working and you're like, but it should work and it's working for all my other friends and it's working for my neighbors and it's working for you know my, my mom's friend's daughter or my dad's friends or, or whoever else, you stay focused on you and you keep persevering. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that with us. It, it seems like maybe taking that break and working a little bit really helped. And would you say, like, do you have like any mentors or people who um, assisted you in that journey? Great question. So, um, so I, I want to circle back a little bit because I know your question was kind of where, where did I kind of see that? Oh, this is the direction. So you are right. Stepping away and working for a little bit did help me because it gave me a different view of things right? It exposed me to different things and different ideas and different ways of doing things. And actually that's when the entrepreneurial part started going. 
because I was, I was like, if it's taken me so long to finish this traditional path, like, like I gotta, I gotta get going with my life, right? I'm, I felt like there was something missing, right? That creativity part, because I was always just grinding at school, but I was grinding at the wrong things in school. Yeah. So definitely while I was out working is when I started like, oh, I like this over here. And then I um, I went to cosmetology school for manicuring. I didn't want to do it for hair, but I, I did like the nails part. And so that was one of my um, entrepreneurial endeavors. I did mobile manicuring and pedicuring. So I would go to people's homes. Um, also, I enjoy jewelry, fashion, as you can see. And so that was something else I would do. Um, I would do what I called handbag parties. So, you know, go to New York, get all these different types of handbags and then go to different people's homes and, and have parties selling my handbags and jewelry. So th that was like the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey, really doing those things that I liked and enjoyed and then finding people of like mind that would want to support me. So I just wanted to touch on that. So now in terms of mentors, yes, 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 yes. Mentors are so, so important. And I've only realized the level of importance, I would say within the past, within the past 12 years or so. So I think it really started when I went to grad school <clears throat> and the connections that I made there. And then really within these last five years, it's just become strong that I've been able to identify people that um, I can really grab a hold of, right? And that I, the, oh, you have, there's, you have something that can definitely help me to move forward. And I have something that I believe can help you, right? So it's like that mutual kind of symbiotic relationship. And that's something that you want to remember with the mentor, no matter who they are or how many accolades they have or how many degrees, I promise you, you have something that they need. I promise you all day, every day, there is something you have that they need also. Thank you. And I think kind of going off of that just a little bit, um, for those watching, how, what's your advice on finding a mentor? Uh, so you're asking me or, or, uh, or uh, for me, the advice? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, being open, and I, might, I know that might sound a little weird, but in being open, it takes away from you saying, right, I have, to have a, I have to have a mentor who does this, right, or I have to have a mentor who does this. So, for example, um, do we have any gamers here? Yep. All right, Davion, anyone else? No? Board games? Yeah. Okay, card games? Yes. Okay. So that requires or involves, right, problem solving skills, right? That requires critical thinking skills. That requires um, focus, right? To know what's going on in the game. If, if your goal is to win the game, which it should be, right? So instead of necessarily saying, oh, I want a mentor who's a gamer also, or I want a mentor who also likes to play board games, right? Be open to someone maybe who might be someone who loves to cook, right? And so they express their creativity in cooking. They work with their problem solving in critical thinking skills, right? If, they, if the recipe calls for whole milk and they only have skim milk, okay, so what can I do here to still make this work? Right, so I would say that's the first thing is to just be open that it doesn't have to be someone with the exact same um, likes and path as you. Uh, the other way to go about finding a mentor is sometimes just asking. Just asking and it's not even a matter of oh I don't want to, you know, I don't want to look like I'm desperate right or anything like that it's not a matter of that you have a need, right? It's a little phrase out there, closed mouths don't get fed, right? So there's something that you're looking for that you're in need of. And so sometimes 
you just have to ask. So if you see someone and there's something about them, something about their energy, something about their personality that just draws you to them, I would say just ask. You know, I'm on the path to do this and I really think you can be a part of helping me get there successfully. I don't know too many people that are going to be like, nah, I don't want to help. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, just everyone here, I think we, we all want to, uh, we want to help people and just naturally. And so I think it's, uh, it's really neat that you're here tonight and kind of sharing that with us and kind of voicing and verbalizing that, that message that everyone's here to help. We're all here to support people. And I think so many people don't get that message. So really, thank you so much for, for sharing that. Sure. Sure, sure. So uh, are there any, a couple more things that I wanted to share, but are there any uh, questions so far or anyone that has been thinking about entrepreneurship and maybe you're, you're not sure kind of what to do or, or what area or even an idea? I've been thinking about doing, uh, you know, running my own hair business. But I just recently um, uh, had an interview for a nursing home, and that was, it was really exciting for me, and it was going to, I realized that it's going to look really good on anything, because I want to be a nurse as well. So it's going to look good on a lot of things, but I do have a couple of questions. How do you, um, besides, you know, the mentors and, you know, all of that, how do you keep yourself on track? Like what motivates you? What do you do to motivate yourself? Like, like just, just motivate like affirmations. Like what do you do to calm yourself down and motivate you? Sure. That is a great question. Uh, so a few things. So one, I want to be completely transparent that there are more times probably that I neglect that part of myself that I know what motivates me than the times I do act on it. So I do not want to come across like, oh yeah, I'm always like on the, no, okay. But when I do, when I do remember, right, to prioritize me, um, one thing is doing things to spark my creativity. So one thing that I really like to do is I like to knit. Okay, and so there's just something about just the rhythm of, of when I'm knitting and getting it done and seeing the progress, right? And so that's something that just keeps me calm. And the creativity, if I'm trying a, a new pattern, right, to see how that works. Um, also, I have a type of morning ritual that I do. Um, again, total transparency. I don't do it every day. I try to, but when I do, it involves one, um, some type of meditation. And so please hear, no way, shape or form am I trying to promote a, a religion or anything like that, but just some form of mo uh, meditation. So whether it's um, if I'm reading a scripture or a devotional or um, listening to a song, right? So I'll do that just to kind of quiet myself. And then I have a journal that I write in. And there are certain things that I, I usually write every day. Um, the first is I say, I must be clear about what I want, right? And even just in writing that, if you ever notice, if you're writing something, right? Or if you're reading, even if you're not reading it out loud, you can still hear it, right? There's still a voice. So either it's someone else's voice that you heard say it, or it's your own voice. So I just wanna say, be very mindful of that. Whenever you're writing or reading, you're still listening. So as I'm writing, that first thing is, I must be clear about what I want. And that just helps to center me. And then I go on with the rest of them. Um, my next thing that I write is, um, I am grateful for the defeats and failures of the past, right? Because I recognize that is what has brought me to this point. So first thing that I try to do is show gratitude. So I'm grateful that that happened. And then I say, thank you, God, for all the blessings that you're going to give me today. So I go from a point of centering 
I must be clear about what I want to I'm grateful to what has brought me here and I'm excited about what's gonna happen today, right? And then usually there's some other type of affirmation or motivation that I write to just kind of focus me for that day. So that's, that's the other thing that I do. So one is something fun like knitting because that boosts my creativity. Um, my daily um, kind of motivation and, and journal writing. And then I love thrift store shopping. Anybody else? Yes, okay, okay. So that is something else that motivates me because I see something from the past, right? Or I see this great pattern on, on a dress or I don't know, just something. And I'm like, ooh, that's different. Look at that, right? So that's the other thing that I do to motivate me to keep going. Like at some point, somebody said, I want to make this dress and they made money off of it because it's sold and it's still here. It's still serving purpose to someone else. And so that encourages me for whatever it is that I'm doing today. I am very hopeful and very intentional in what I do that it is serving someone today and they can take that to serve someone later. Yeah, so I would say those are like the, the main things that I do for motivation. Did that answer your question, Sanaya? Yes. Sure. Can I just say something to you about your idea that you like here? So do you want to like have your own beauty supply store or are you like actually doing hair? I, I want both. It's you like going to be like a shop and then it's going to be um, a store. Like, right, but they're going to be combined. And okay. sometimes I can, you know, I'm going to have my own personal chair. And um, sometimes I take, you know, do I do the hair? And then when I don't want to, I don't do it. But I do love to do hair. Okay. So something, if I can just share, because you mentioned about working in the nursing home, and I'm not sure what your responsibilities would be there. What about doing hair in the nursing home? That's, um, that sounds really good, um, being the fact that I, um, I do help get them dressed, and I help them get ready for the day, and then um, she has to train me for transporting them to the bed, to the wheelchair, and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. that, that's definitely a good idea. I haven't thought of that. Mm -hmm. So I would say think about that. So when my grandmother was in the nursing home, there was someone who would come in a couple times a week, right, and we would just make appointments to, for my grandmother to get her hair done. There was also someone that came in that did nails. And so we'd make an appointment for my grandmother to get her nails done when that person was there. So just a thought. Yes, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Is there any other questions? I actually have a question. Yes. Uh, this kind of like, well, I guess it kind of applies to me because I like really feel passionate about like music, which in some way could be in an influencer type of way, but in my opinion, like in like songwriting and like um, actually like using music. So my question was, does like everything you said about like the influencers point of view and stuff like that apply to non-influencers as well? And like entrepreneurs, like does it apply to people who have original jobs and besides uh, entrepreneurs and stuff like that? Okay, I wanna make sure I'm clear on, on your question. So what aspect are you asking? Does it apply to entrepreneurs or people who have jobs? Which aspect? I'm asking like, if it's an original job, like non, um, like for example, like if it applies to someone who's like a police officer or something, like does it apply to them? Okay, I got you. So yes, yes, and yes. So when you think about an entrepreneur, it does not always have to be someone who has their own business. It can sometimes be a state of mind. Right. So even in um, so your example of being a police officer, right, you can go to school right, and do the training and everything for a police officer. And at some point, 
there was a an officer or just someone in the department who said, in addition to regular police officers, we need those who can respond to special situations if there's someone that has some type of mental health issue, right? So that's like an entrepreneurial mindset because it's, okay, we need to step outside of our regular box of what we do on a day-to-day and look at something else, right? So so definitely, yes, you can take any, um, any type of regular job. You think about a doctor, right? So doctors go to school, right? There's a set regimen, set curriculum that they're supposed to go through. And at one point, there was a doctor who said, I've been noticing I have several patients that have heart issues. I wonder what would happen if I really focused in on that, right? So that's that entrepreneurial mindset of not just the regular, but now I want to focus in on that. Yeah. And even things that are needed to help. Right. So at one point, people were like, "Okay, as a doctor, you do your exam, you see what's going on with someone. And then someone said, but we need to see what's going on inside. So what if we created this great big machine and people would lie down on it and it was like a tunnel and then they have to go in there and have to be really still. Right. But then we can see what's going on inside of them and we'll call it an MRI. Right. So again, that's that entrepreneurial of stepping outside of just being a doctor, just treating people on the day to day to, hmm, okay, but what else can be done? So yes, definitely the the different um, skills and even thinking can be uh, transferred to have an entrepreneurial mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks for for all the the questions. I think now we're gonna we're gonna move on a little bit, and um, so our next segment we're gonna try to focus a little bit more on how to get into podcasting or business. Um, right. Could you share with us um, a couple uh, your advice on how to get into uh, into the career you've gotten into? Sure. So. One, what I've learned is do what it is that you like to do, right? And and sometimes it might be hard as a young person, right? Because again, you have people in your ears over here. You need to do this and you need to do that. And I'm not, yay for the adults in your life that mean well, right? And want the best for you. And our world is changing, And what was the status quo is not really working, right? We need your not necessarily wanting to do the traditional, let's try something else, right? So years ago, when online learning first came out, um, it was really looked down on, right? I mean, people were like, oh, you got your degree off of the computer? Must not be a real degree. And now, right, well, within the past year, we've gotten a little bit more out of school, but for about a year there, a year and a half, that's all we were doing, right, was online. When I think about it, and and people who have um, an imagination and keep going, does anybody remember the show, The Brady Bunch? Yeah. Right? One thing I always thought was so cool about The Brady Bunch is when it first came on the screen, what was it? Y'all, that was Zoom. Y'all remember how they looked? Right? They, the nine and they could look up at each other. That was Zoom. So somebody had a thought, wouldn't this be cool? And it took a while for stuff to catch up, right? But my whole point is, whatever it is that you're liking, go for it. And so that's how I got into podcasting, right? Because what? I'm a sponge. So I fill up, I fill up, I fill up, I fill up, and I need places to squeeze out what it is I've learned, right? When I fill up and I meet people and I meet awesome entrepreneurs who are doing things, who are baking and making these delicious, beautiful 
pieces of art called cake, right? Or if I meet other entrepreneurs that are so passionate about what is going on in our world and are dedicating what they do outside of school to serving the homeless population in their area, right? Or just all these wonderful things. I'm like, oh, I'm filling up, I'm filling up. And other people have got to know this right? Other people have got to meet them. Other people have got to know this person started their business at 11 years old. They're now 17 and look at what they're doing, right? And that doesn't mean that college maybe is not an option for them, right? They still may choose to do that. And in the meantime, right, they're doing what it is that they love. They're really contributing to not just themselves, but they're serving someone else in, in what it is they do, right? One of the, the young people that I interviewed on my podcast, um, what was her name on Instagram? I think it was Jammy Girl. And I asked her, and so she makes um, body care, right? Soaps and, and creams and such. And I said, well, how, how do you come up with the name Jammy Girl? She said, because I always like making things while I'm in my pajamas. I don't like getting dressed for it. okay, right? She's doing what she enjoys. So it's just those type of little things that allow her to be herself and do her thing, right? And in addition, she also, um, I would notice her hashtag on a lot of her things said adoption rocks. And so I said, you know, just can you tell me a little bit more what, what made you so passionate about it? She said, well, me and my brother were adopted and my mom is great. She's a single mom. And I just want other people to know adoption rocks. I was like, yes, right? So she's just being herself. She's expressing herself. She's doing her thing. And so that, that is the, the, the one thing I would definitely say. And again, what brought me to podcasting, being able to talk to other people, share other things. Um, the other, what else got me to teaching? So I did a substitute teaching when I was in grad school for one of my professors. And that's when I really got bit with the, um, just that, that teaching bug, right? Being able to share something that I know, but like I said, I always learn something from my students. I always, always, always. It is never, um, I, I don't want to, walk into any classroom, right, or any space as like a sage on the stage, I'd much rather be a guide on the side, okay? Because everybody in the room has something to contribute. And, and that's what I, I want to be able to put out there. Yeah, so that's what I would say, right? Go with whatever it is um, that drives you. I'll give you another example of uh, everything's not taken up, right? There's still room. So, um, has anybody ever heard of Ford Motor Company? Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, how about Chrysler? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cadillac? Yep. Honda? Yeah. Toyota? Okay. So all of these car companies were there, right? Had been there for years and years and years. And then anybody ever heard of Tesla? Yep. All right. He hasn't been around, Elon Musk hasn't been around too, too long with Tesla. But what about all the people who told him there's already cars out here? What, what are you doing trying to make another car? Right? And if anybody, is anybody um, where you can go on Google to tell me what today's stock price is for Tesla? If you well, can. Last, last time I checked, it was about some 50, but. Uh, with the market the way it is, uh, you never know. You never know, but you know what? If we're going to go with the number 750, I'll go with that number. <laughs> Even if the market gets a little funky, right? So again, if you have an idea, go for it. Has anybody ever heard of NASA? Yeah. Right? For the longest time, they were the only ones in the space game, right? And then again, same person, Elon Musk comes along with SpaceX, right? Now left and right. Everybody going up and down, up and down, up and down, in and out of space, okay? So again, he pursued something that he liked. 
even though he didn't have an example of a whole lot of other people doing that same thing, didn't matter. It was something that he liked to do. So that would be my biggest thing, whatever it is that you like. And then read up on it. So I know sometimes, and I even come across this with my students in college, some people don't like to read, right? And I would say that's okay because I believe you just haven't found what you actually want to be reading, okay? So I don't want you to let anybody from this day forth, right? If you say, oh, I don't really like reading and they say, oh, no, 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 right? They come back with me. no. You may just not have found that thing that you really like reading about. But once you do, okay, I want you to work on devouring everything that you can about it. So for example, Davion, you had raised your hand when I said, was there anyone who was a gamer, right? If uh, let's say someone said, Davion, I need you to go and sit in a classroom for an hour and a half while we talk about English and APA writing style. Probably not going to want to go, right? Uh -huh. just, I know, APA is not my jam either. But if somebody was to say, hey, Davion, we're going to be streaming on Twitch. We're going to have a three-hour marathon on finding all the secrets of Fortnite. I'm not going to go. You might not go? I might go. I don't know. You, you might go? Okay. But it you're probably going to... It depends on my mood. If, okay. What if it's an hour streaming? Will you show up for an hour? Yeah, I'll go. You go for that. Okay. Right? So that's my whole point. Once you find what that thing is that you would be willing to give an hour of your time to sit and watch maybe somebody else play the game so that you can learn something to help you do better, then that's what you go for. Yeah, so even if it is, if somebody wants to revive the whole pet rock, I don't know, somebody made money off of it before. Has anybody ever heard of a uh, Chia Pet? <laughs> yeah. Made millions off of Chia. Anybody has ever heard the commercial, right? Because somebody had an idea and then what? They started turning it into different things. I've seen Scooby-Doo, Chia Pet, right? My point is, if it's something that you like, then go for it. There is room and there's a need. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to answer some of our questions and uh, share a little bit about uh, what it is to be a podcaster and a small business owner. Um, do you have any last uh, like comments and advice for those wanting to go into um, entrepreneurship or even just going into a career? Sure. Um, very good questions. So talk with people who are doing what you're doing. So have you heard of the platform called LinkedIn? Yes. Yes, okay. So that is a great resource and it's no longer, um, it's no longer like stogy, right? Like, you know, we have to have on the shoot and uh, get the job. It's not like that anymore. It really is a great place to connect. So if you find, um, I don't know, let's say you're, you're into uh, social media and you've been thinking about creating your own social media platform, right? Because there's room, right? There's definitely room for that. And you hop on LinkedIn and you start following Jack Dorsey, right? So Jack Dorsey was the previous CEO of Twitter. So you start following Jack Dorsey and you see he's making comments and you start just, you know, liking his comment or saying a little something. And then you send him a note and say, you know what, I really enjoyed seeing how you took your vision for Twitter and made it what it was before you handed it over to someone else. I'm thinking about doing something in the social media space. Do you think we could do like a 15 minute Zoom meet? 
right? You're not asking for a job, right? He can see you've been following him, you've been interacting. So again, going back to asking, right? If you see somebody who's doing something that you're interested in, ask them, right? If anybody on here was interested in podcasting, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions, right? In terms of how it's done or, or, or what type of equipment to be used. Again, finding a niche, right? That was my thing. I enjoy talking to young entrepreneurs and seeing all the great things that they were doing. And so I said, that's what I want my focus to be on. An opportunity for me to share all that I have learned in business, all of my defeats and failures. If I can share them with someone else, and someone from hearing my story of it taking me 13 years to get what was supposed to be a four-year degree, right? To take time to find someone to make a better choice if you decide to go to college, right? To find a college that fits you in what you want so you don't have to spend all that much time, then I, I just think that's great. One other thing too, your skills, Everybody has a slew of skills, okay? Even though you might say, well, I'm young, I'm just figuring out, no, no, no. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you have a slew of skills. Work to um, not perfect them, work to sharpen them. That's what I wanna say, right? So um, if writing is something that you enjoy doing, that's also a type of skill, right? So work to sharpen that. Maybe you put yourself on Fiverr and offer to write blog posts for people, all right? So one, that's a form of entrepreneurship, right? A way for you to make money. Two, a way for you to sharpen your skill, right? By, by having an opportunity to write on a regular basis. Okay, um, skills of empathy, right? So Sanaya, just her speaking that she desires to work in a nursing home, there are certain skills that come along with working in a nursing home. It's not for everybody. It is not for everyone, right? But for whatever your skills are, celebrate them and then just work to sharpen them. And I really believe that they will make room for you. And just one last thing, I know we're coming up on time. Something that I say at the end of all my podcast episodes, everything in creation was created with a gift inside of it. That includes you. So make sure you go out there and share your gift with the world. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks so much for sharing all this. all your experience with us because it seems like you have you have a wealth of knowledge from you know your your background your growing up uh, with with all that happened during that time as well as you know taking 13 years to to get a degree and kind of sharing that so thank you so much for being a little vulnerable with us and and sharing uh, sharing your journey um before we go uh where can people reach you if they want to learn a little bit more and uh, to learn, yeah, learn more about your podcast. Sure. So um, you can check me out on podcast platforms and on YouTube at Teens Biz Talk. That's Teens with an S B I Z Talk dot com. And also, you can check out some things that I have um, on Empowering Educator. Dot gumroad.com. So that's where I have some digital products. Um, actually, there's something there if you guys want to check it out. It's called um, Five Steps to Starting a Business as a Teenager. Um, there's no charge for that. So feel free to go ahead and uh, hop onto Gumroad and take a look at that if that interests you. Um, yeah, I say those are two main places. Great. Thanks so much. And we, we really appreciate you taking the time to share your wisdom with us. Sure. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Awesome. Awesome session, you guys. Any other questions, just in case? Okay. Tara, we are so happy that you shared with us. Appreciate you very much for, for sharing with us. 
Um, I will put on our uh, Facebook and I'll have anybody that uh, wants to, I'll, we'll be sending out emails for them because we actually have some people that were very interested in the podcast. So, okay. and we'll, we're probably going to be our first time trying to launch it in YouTube. So we'll see all the different things that come up with us um, trying new things of reaching other people. So right now I'm going to stop recording or I mean, Davion, stop recording. <laughs>